GCL Plus has a number of built-in functions. The GCL Plus help file defines a function this way. A function performs a specific computation based on one or more arguments and returns a value that is useful for assignment in the program. So what does this mean for you and I learning programming? Well, a function is a word in GCL that is used to perform a calculation or return a value based on some conditions. Functions will show up in yellow lettering in the GCL Plus editor. There are some that we use over and over again, specifically for HVAC. Others apply more to building management or managing the controller or the BMS itself. One of the most common ones you will see is the switch function. It is defined as follows. A switch function turns a binary object on and off when an analog value rises above a set point or drops below a set point. It says that it turns something on and off when a value rises above or below a set point. What does that sound like to you? Well, basically a switch statement is a thermostat. In our previous programming tutorials, we turned on a light and then a fan when some buttons were pushed. But what if we get a new sequence of operation from the consultant and we are asked to control the fan this way? When the room temperature goes above 24 degrees C, the fan will turn on. The fan will operate with a dead band of 2 degrees. So you read this and know that it is a straightforward thermostat operation. As a way to know how to use and make sure you fill out the parameters correctly while you are learning to program, I recommend finding the switch in the help file and then copying the example into your program. You can simply make it a comment line and type it out below. Once things are up and running correctly, we can simply delete it. Examining the different parts of the switch example, we can see we have the word switch. When we start typing, that's the one that will turn yellow. Then we have some brackets. Inside those brackets, we have first binary output. So that's going to be what's going to turn on and off. We have the analog value, which is going to be our temp sensor. We have an on value, which is when the output's going to turn on. And then an off value, which is the set point at which things turn off. So let's start a new line underneath our example that we paint, we pasted in. We'll type out the word switch and you'll see it turns yellow. So we need some brackets. We'll start with that. So remember our binary output is what's going to turn on. So in this case, we want to turn on the fan. So here's a trick in IntelliWeb. If you start to type a word, you can hit control space bar and it'll list all the objects that are in that controller that have the word fan in them. So we'll select fan enable and hit enter and it puts it in for us. We need a comma, another space, and then an analog value. On our trainers, we actually have some adjustable pots. And I'm going to use the one of those to simulate a temp sensor. So instead of a word, I'm going to say, let's look at an analog input and hit control space bar. And there it lists all our analog inputs. So I'm going to select the adjustable pot, hit enter, and it puts it in for us. We need another comma. So our on value, do you remember what that was? It was 24 degrees Celsius. And then our off value. Now, remember, we needed a dead band of 2 degrees. That was a specification listed in our sequence of operation. So we can use the off value to simulate a dead band. So we'll take 24 minus 2. That gives us 22. And then we hit our bracket. Now, we can validate selecting that to see if we got our typing correct. And we have. Now, if we look at our example here, it says result equals. We actually need to put something in front of this. Well, it turns out what you have to put in front is actually the same object as we have here. So we can simply copy and paste it in. And it looks like that. Let's validate it again. Good. So let's save it to our controller. And there's one more thing we need to take care of. Now, if you recall in our previous tutorial, we had to command the fan speed. So we can't take care of that in our switch statement, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply command the fan speed, that's the analog output, to a constant value for now. 
Now this introduces a new concept, and this is simply commanding something. We're going to come back to this when we talk about variables in the next tutorial. But what's basically happening here is every time the fan enable switch statement turns the fan on and off, it's going to go to 100%. So we can validate it, save it to our controller, and then next we can test it. We can also use the object reference watch list in the GCL Plus editor to watch the input value change as we turn the set point pod. Watch as the value changes and turns on the output. I will turn it back to stop the fan, but notice that it does not turn off until the input is below 22.